If you haven't heard about PFASs, you need to watch this video. What are these chemicals? Do they really cause cancer? And how did they become the subject of the recent Hollywood blockbuster, Dark Waters? Here's the crucial science you didn't see in the film. PFASs, or perfluoroalkyl and polyfluoroalkyl substances, are a group of man-made chemicals originally used for coating tanks, but are now used in waterproof clothes, firefighting foams, Teflon pans, and even pizza boxes. PFASs consist of a carbon chain surrounded by several fluorine atoms joined to an acid group. The carbon-fluorine bond is incredibly strong and causes the carbon chain to repel water and oil as well as shielding it from just about any biological, chemical or thermal attack below 1000 degrees C. These incredible chemical properties allowed PFASs to be used in thousands of different products but also allowed them to become almost untreatable toxic pollutants. Keep watching to discover the history and future of these chemicals, as well as five easy tips to fight PFAS pollution. Carbon fluorine bonds are rarely found in nature, and so no life or other natural pathways have evolved to break them down. PFASs also bioaccumulate, meaning that once they get into living tissue, they remain there, building up progressively higher concentrations, which also increase along the food chain. To make things worse, these compounds are unaffected by conventional water treatment systems, and as of 2016, at least 7 million Americans' water supplies are tainted with PFASs. And scientists have actually found PFASs in water samples almost everywhere on Earth, as well as in soils, plants, animals, and in 99% of humans. Technologies have been developed to remove PFASs from water and soil, and are slowly being implemented. But the challenge remains as to what to do with these nearly indestructible chemicals once collected. This is something academics and industrial groups are still working on. But just how toxic are they? PFASs cause increased risk of hormone imbalances, high cholesterol, reduced birth weights, testicular, prostate, pancreatic and liver cancers, possible DNA damage and birth defects to name a few. Many of these symptoms were discovered by two of the companies who made PFASs, DuPont and 3M, in their own workers. But almost none of this was ever disclosed to its customers, employees, the EPA, or the communities it was poisoning. Despite the dangers and having alternative disposal methods for decades, DuPont released hundreds of tons of toxic PFAS into the Ohio River and contaminated the water supplies of over 100,000 people in West Virginia, making many of them extremely sick. This is in addition to the thousands of tons of PFASs in Teflon products, which ended up in consumers' homes and food and eventually landfills around the world. DuPont even developed a less toxic and less bioaccumulative alternative to use in its manufacture of Teflon, but decided against it as the profitability of the new chemical was unknown. By the early 2000s, the average American had five times the amount of PFAS in their blood that DuPont considered safe for its factory's drinking water. Thankfully, 3M ceased the manufacture of some PFASs in early 2000, with DuPont following suit much later in 2013. A lawsuit headed by Rob Bellot, the real-life hero on which the movie Dark Waters is based, eventually proved DuPont's guilt over the illegal dumping of PFASs. As a result, they agreed to implement water filtration systems in the affected areas, which they failed to do. The lawsuit did however fund seven years of scientific study into the health effects of PFASs, including the largest epidemiological study in human history, with 71,000 affected civilians as participants. Researchers proved a link between one PFAS and increased risk of kidney cancer, testicular cancer, thyroid disease, high cholesterol, preeclampsia, and ulcerative colitis. DuPont disputed the findings, but eventually settled for around $700 million. However, DuPont makes over a billion dollars a year from Teflon alone, and has never admitted any guilt. In the last decade, two PFASs, PFOS and PFOA, were added to the Stockholm Convention, which strongly regulates organic pollutants. These two chemicals are now only permitted for use in small quantities where no alternatives exist, such as in scientific research. However, at least 5,000 new PFASs have been developed, which are much less regulated or medically understood. Some of these new PFASs are less harmful and less bioaccumulative, but can be converted into more harmful products once they've partially degraded in the environment. Drinking water standards now limit PFASs to a few parts per trillion. That's equivalent to about one drop in several thousand Olympic swimming pools. But no one is really sure of a safe limit, other than none. The actions of Rob Bullock go to show what a truly monumental difference one individual can make. That said, here's five easy tips you can take to fight PFAS pollution. 1. Support action to regulate these chemicals in consumer products by going to www.darkwatersfilm.co.uk forward slash sign up and sign the petition. 2. 
Be informed about what's in the products you buy, including in packaging, and avoid PFASs wherever possible. 3. Consider buying a ceramic or steel pan next time you need new cookware to reduce the amount of PFASs in your food. 4. Petition for governments and water boards to measure the concentration of PFASs in household water supplies. 5. Understand more about the history of PFAS pollution by watching the film Dark Waters and also read the New York Times article The Lawyer Who Became DuPont's Worst Nightmare, on which the film was based. Bonus tip! Share this video with friends and family to help them understand the dangers of PFASs and check out the free documentaries linked in the description. If you like this content, subscribe to our channel as well as our other social media. Give this video a thumbs up and comment any feedback for future videos. Look after yourselves, each other, and most importantly, the planet around you. Thanks again, R. Eden.